te habría llamado, pero no tenía tu número de teléfono. I would have called you, but I didn't have your phone number. Hello, everyone. In today's lesson, we're going to learn about el condicional perfecto or conditional perfect. So let's begin. So, like any of the other perfect tenses that we have seen, el condicional perfecto, it is also formed using the verb haber, but in the form of the conditional and a past participle. So, let's take a look at the singular conjugation. Yo habría, tú habrías, él, ella, usted, habría, and all this is followed by a past participle. So now let's take a look at the plural forms. Nosotros habríamos, and ellos, ellas, ustedes, habrían. And again, followed by a past participle. So let's take a look at the sentence. Creo que González habría sido un buen presidente. I think González would have been a good president. And the verb habría sido is the form of the conditional. So let's take a look at our sentence a little bit more slowly. Creo que González habría sido un buen presidente. I think González would have been a great president. So, would have been is the equivalent of habría sido. And what this sentence basically tells us is an event that would have occurred or happened, but it didn't for whatever reason. So, el condicional perfecto is basically the clause that is known as the excuse clause or the one that gets you out of trouble. And this is because, remember, we use the conditional perfect to express an action that would have happened but something prevented that action from happening. So the conditional perfect typically contains a clause that explains why the action did not occur. And this word that joins both clauses is usually the word pero or but. So let's take a look at another example. Juan y Lidia habrían ido a la manifestación, pero tenían otros planes. So, the equivalent in English will be Juan and Lydia would have gone to the protest, but they had other plans. So notice that the uh, equivalent of habrían ido would, will be would have gone. And then the verb after the pero is in the indicative or the past, because remember, we're going to express an action that would have happened, but it didn't happen. So now let's take a look at the difference between when to use exactly the future perfect versus the conditional perfect. So remember that the future perfect indicates what will have happened by a certain point in time. So, as we already said, for instance, habré terminado la tarea para las ocho de la noche, meaning that if I finish my homework by the time is eight o'clock or right before, that is my expected outcome. 
The conditional perfect, on the other hand, indicates what would have happened in the past but didn't happen. So, for example, if I say I would have gone to the movies but I didn't, then it means that the action didn't complete. It was what I expected to do, but it didn't complete. So let's take a look at this example. Me habré casado para cuando tenga 25 años. So if we look at in our timeline, right? Let's say presently I am 15 years old, and what I'm hoping to achieve by the time I get to be 25 is... Uh, to get married. So this is why I said I, I will have uh, gotten married. Now, let's say if I am not 15 anymore, but right now I'm older, I'm 35, um, I'm, uh, I'm um, 35 years old. And then I'm going to say, me habría casado a los 25 años, pero cambié de opinión. So if I look at... Um, at my timeline, then I say, okay, I'm 25 years old right now, right? I'm 35, sorry, years old right now. 25 is in my past. So it means that that was what I hoped to do when I was that age, but I changed my opinion. Um, so as a result, I am now 34 and I'm not married, okay? And that's it for today.